Huge win over the Lions in week three for our first win of the season. And I was checking out the news and there's actually kind of a big storyline in regards to the draft class. Jonathan Coachman, the coach from WWE growing up, says mutual separation was the term used to describe the departure of cornerback John Holloman from Washington. Now, what's particularly interesting about that is... John Holloman is a top draft prospect in this current draft class. He's supposed to go inside the top five. He's supposedly a top five talent and now has been, I don't want to say dismissed from the team, but is departing. Never a good sign into the season. Red flag on John Holloman. We have to know that. And he's already like not that great of an athlete, maybe so. I can go ahead and kind of take him off our draft board. But somebody I want to add, without knowing too much about him, is Dante Boston from LSU. You go over to the skill set here, and we only know awareness, play rec, and tackle. But it's all A and at a position of need. Let's flick on the tape. We can see he's got great to elite acceleration, great to elite agility, good to great change of direction, great to elite jumping. Good to great speed and solid to good strength. So he is at the very worst, at least average to above average in strength. And then basically borderline elite in every other athletic category. Scouting report says for the six foot four, 269 pound defensive end from LSU. He's a physical player who delivers bone crushing hits. Loves to utilize a spin as a counter move. Has a swift arm over move in his arsenal. Will utilize power and leverage to bowl through pass protectors. Has a motor that runs through the whistle. Often looks to rip the ball from runners. However, he does lack discipline resulting in avoidable penalties. But when you check out Dante Boston from LSU, you do see a player that is certainly worthy of being considered for the number one overall selection. And I'm not going to say we're going to be in line for that pick, but of course, you can trade up, you can trade down, you can move around the board and navigate and try to get the best players available. And at least from a preliminary glance, Dante Boston to me seems like he could be one of the best players in the class. We need more information. If it comes back and he's not the best at shedding blocks or actually rushing the passer, and you know what, maybe just made some splash plays, but he's not actually that good, we'll, uh, we'll you know, pivot and look a different direction. But right now, Dante Boston is number one on the board, and we could potentially use a tackle upgrade as well. Shokari Atwater from Vanderbilt. Got a motor that runs through the whistle, shows good discipline and won't get flagged much. Super important for your tackle. And then physically, he's got good to great acceleration, great to elite agility, solid to good change of direction, solid to good jumping, great to elite speed, and then only decent to solid strength, which is average to maybe slightly below average. Don't really have a ton of information on him right now other than a lead block. But of course, when you're talking about someone that could go top five in the draft, he's there for a reason. We're also going to check out his teammate, Landry Hubbard from Vanderbilt. It's kind of interesting to see two top five players from this SEC school, kind of the bottom feeders, and not maybe not kind of, but definitely the bottom feeders of that conference in college football. It's only 5'8", but built sturdy at 209 pounds, 21 years old, and shows decent awareness to protect the ball when getting hit. He needs to work on simple concentration drops, so maybe not an elite receiving back, but does fight for every single inch as a runner, avoids big hits following catches, and excels at creating yards after the catch. So maybe there are some things that lead us to believe he can be a good receiving back, even if he will make a mistake on occasion and not catch the easily catchable pass. Good to great acceleration, good to great agility, but only decent to solid change of direction, good to great jumping, only decent to solid speed, and poor to marginal strength. So you kind of worry about this guy as a bell cow running back, especially at only 5'8", but does have B juke move, which is pretty good. Only C carrying, D trucking. He's not really a jack of all trades as far as I can tell. But we'll start back at the NFL level with a QB1 check-in. Desmond Ritter played pretty great last week, but... Coach, your team has struggled out of the gate so far, and, and when that happens, a lot of blame is usually placed on the quarterback who needs to step up. Well, he played well last week, but the fact of the matter is there's more to just winning than the quarterback playing well. 
You got to block in front of them. You got to get open if you're a receiver. You got to be able to catch the ball if you are open. And even when you're not sometimes. And then the defense has to play well as well. And the fact of the matter is for me, the team has not played well enough around Desmond Ritter, especially up front. Last week, we played great. And maybe even more so than us playing great, the Lions played so terribly and just let us dominate them on offense and or when they were on defense with our offense, right? But our game goal beat the Jaguars. Simple as that. The Jags are a team on the rise, but they're not there yet. 80 offense, 81 defense, 80 overall. Our overall is actually pretty good here in the 83. But this is a game we need to win. Get back with decent footing in the NFC South. It's early, but we really can't afford to fall down too much further. The Panthers are already 3-0. We got to start accumulating some Ws. Let's go. And it does start with stopping this guy. Trevor Lawrence, quarterback Jesus. Not to be confused with clipboard Jesus. He's blonde Jesus. Charlie Whitehurst. Anyway, uh, I've already done some drills here. And, and it's a shame you can't do any for offensive linemen, but I do want Matthew Bergeron to continue to get XP. So he's going to stay as a focus player and we'll uh, just keep on grinding. No injuries on offense or defense. You have an upgrade for Chris Lindstrom though. Let's improve him as a pass protector. And I've also made sure that Matthew Bergeron's getting the start. Last week it was Matt Hennessy. We had an injury to Drew Dahlman for a short amount of time, but Dahlman back starting. Bergeron back starting. Hennessy's going to take a back seat and just be the backup left guard, center, right guard. Swing interior offensive lineman. Man, look at that blonde hair flowing from Trevor Lawrence. We are back in London. I don't know how I manage to do this every year. It's completely accidental. But I seem, I think maybe at least two years in a row, I seem to have picked a team that is opening up... Um, London Stadium for the first time in the uh, in the league year and we'll see what happens last year I broke out some real bad English accents will that happen in this video I haven't had enough to drink today but it's never too late to start could happen depending on how this game goes Jamal Agnew back to return he'll take a kneel down in the end zone and the Jags offense will take the field you can see the former Clemson teammates, Travis Etienne and Trevor Lawrence, who knows, talking about something prior to the game. And Trevor Lawrence is off to a hot start. Three games, 700 yards passing, seven touchdowns to just one interception, playing very good football to start. And we are going to look to shut that down. Of course, there is an injury. Today we're going to be without our, I mean, developmental inside linebacker I actually don't know where he is he's not showing up on the injury report but Troy Anderson's not playing I don't think unless he's just miraculously healed from a torn labrum which he just didn't come to London I guess okay so we're gonna kind of roll with a money backer today Jalen Hawkins gonna play a little bit of linebacker as we let that walk in front of us and uh yeah I might be good for a bad Peaky Blenders Arthur impression at some point. It could happen. Oh, RPO. Hit him. Make him pay. Calvin Ridley, the new Jag, getting into it with the new Falcon, Jesse Bates. The, the Jags are off to a good start in this one. Following the script beautifully. I guess the script says that we're going to get destroyed today. I mean, the Jags home away from home is in London. So, you know, this is tough. They have home field advantage. And now Lorenzo Carter's injured. Okay. Our whole team's just going to be injured this year. Not ideal. Elbow bursitis. We're going to bring in D'Angelo Malone. He was drafted fairly high for a reason. Not like a first-round pick or anything, but I think he went inside the top three or four rounds. Oh, read option, and it's completely shut down. Brady Jarrett making Trevor Lawrence pay. Let's go, Grady. It's a great play. I'd love to see a replay of it. Here we go. Read option plus maybe a pitch option. Not sure if that was triple option or not. But either way, we were all over it. We shut it down. And the Jags are not satisfied with that result. They are going for it on fourth and four. We pass commit. And they're throwing right at Jalen Hawkins. Easy reads. One fish, two fish. Red fish, blue fish. 
Easy reads, Jalen Hawkins, user pick, and we're going to take over. I mean, it's not the worst thing because they would have punted on fourth down anyway, a little bit too long for a field goal, I would bet, but they probably didn't want to turn over the football. Jalen Hawkins sitting right in that spot on the zone drop, taking away those slants. Big turnover, and now Desmond Ritter and the offense will take the field. Boy, I'm going to pick a fucking broadness. Terrible, I know. That's the point. Man, those numbers are bad. Get him off the screen. A little whip route. Patterson wide open and speed. Cam Dantzler, is that who's in pursuit? You're not fast enough, son. 22 yards from Cordero. Good start on offense for the boys. We're getting the ball down the field. Never mind. A little inaccurate there. It was safer to just go underneath. We wanted a little bit more. And uh, that could have been a mistake. We just streak Drake London here. I mean, Trayvon Walker dropping back in coverage could be a problem for it. We're gonna try to fit that in. And it's intercepted. How are you able to make a play on that? Darius Williams. Was it, was it underthrown? I'm not really sure how that's a pick. I mean, I, clearly I got baited masterfully. I don't know. Maybe you needed to high point that. I felt like that was fairly open. Obviously, something didn't compute here in my head. I just don't know how we see Drake London here and Darius Williams about 10 yards off to his left as we throw. And he somehow gets in position to make the play. Like, we want the ball out in front here, but it's about 10 yards under thrown. And Drake Lennon's going to have to come back for it instead of reaching over his shoulder. Guess we needed to do the custom pass there to lead it out ahead. A little annoying. I mean, the angles from Jesse Bates are absolutely worse and worse every week. I'm going to keep complaining about this because this is just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Jesse Bates, I'm not saying one of the best run support safeties, but... He's one of the best safeties in the league, and every week it's more and more clear he has no idea what he's doing. Look at him. He's just running into Jeff Okuda, and then we switch on here. Pressing A to make the tackle, and you're telling me that's not close enough to get a wrap-up animation? Oh, I mean, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, I, I don't know that I want to dive right when we're standing right next to the guy i want the wrap-up tackle stupid it's a touchdown oh ridley fumbled the ball and it's recovered in the end zone by evan ingram i'm not gonna lose my cool today been a good day why did i have to play this game dude i should have known who hit him richie grant Hayden Ellis tried to tackle him with his back. That's interesting technique. And then Evan Ingram dives on the loose ball in the end zone. I thought it would have been a Calvin Ridley touchdown anyway, so... Whatever. We have to just find Caleb on chase on, on the field and run at him. I'm not sure he even plays very much. Bijan in the open field. He makes a man miss. Bijan still going, showing the power, still on his feet. 36 yards for Bijan Robinson to start this game. That's what we needed to do. Why are we even trying to pass when we have B. John Robinson? He gets outside, shows the speed, jukes back inside, shows the contact balance, and then he's just showing power and determination. Oh, B. John's going to be an absolute monster in this series. You guys already know. Look at the power here, lowering the shoulder, low man wins. And Darius Williams, you're no match for Bijan Robinson. They needed the rest of the team to rally and bring him down. Otherwise, that could have been a touchdown. What a run from Bijan Robinson. And could that set us up for a bomb here off play action? Hmm, maybe. We'll take a throw away, I guess. We'll call it that. Throw it up to Bijan. I mean, I like it. I really think he's open. If we could actually get the ball out, I tried to lead it there. I didn't get it. But if we could actually get the ball out in front there, that's a huge play. I just have to, I have to practice the target passing more, and then we're going to be good with it. 
There it is. Kyle Pitts to the end zone. Touchdown. I don't need to practice. Talking about practice. Talking about practice. In my AI era. And that's the answer. Kyle Pitts down the field. Laser from Ritter. Nice catch too. Oh, the beautiful. Kyle Pitts. Play of the series for him. Do we just keep blitzing Trevor Lawrence? Got to figure out some way to make plays. And I guess maybe forcing the ball out quickly is the way to go. I'm not really sure. Kind of a bold pass commit here. They only have four wide receivers operating out a gun. And they do run the ball. Nice. Richie Grant brings him down. Had a little bit of help maybe. Cade Nellis touched him. Grady Jarrett was there. It's going to be third and seven. Definitely pass committing here. And I think we're just going to use her Caden Ellis. Let Jalen Hawkins do his thing. Just spot drop. Spot drop. Check down. We had help. Nice tackle. And we'll see what they opt to do here on fourth and two to end the first quarter. They're going to try a field goal. This is not an easy one. And these British fans would know a thing or two about kick, huh? <laughs> just like, I think we had something at the start there. And then uh, <laughs> I was, it almost sounded too good to me. I had to make it even worse. <laughs> Wide right, shanked. And our offense will take over at about midfield here. Right in the middle, pitch it is. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Bijan, up the middle. Give a block. Do something. They're blitzing. Get the ball out early. Drake London, nice catch. London in London? The Drake London game? Do we have to start forcing him the ball because of the narrative? They're bringing the safeties up. No help over the top. We do have Julio. They're blitzing. Get the football out. It was supposed to be for Cordero Patterson. Tried to switch on to Julio to make the play. Get another errant ball from yours truly. Ritter with the assist. Second and 10. Give London a chance. Drake London in London. I see London. I see France. I see Trevor Lawrence underpants. Well, I, I don't want to do that, but it doesn't matter. Touchdown. Do that, T-Law. I don't think so. Just give your six foot four receiver a chance. Andre Sisco jumped up. No chance. Desmond Ritter having a game here today. Not consistency, right? But the splash play. That's the reason why we're up 14-7 right now. Nice quarter. Nice way to rebound. Oh, no. Oh, no. Evan Ingram. He's going to outrun Richie Grant. We need this flag to be a hold. AJ Terrell stops the touchdown. God, if you just get the ball in the open field, we just can't catch anybody. Oh, no. A hold. Dowie. Back to the 26. Idiots. Third and two for the Jags. They're going to run the football. And wow, look at the speed. I don't know how ETN got caught up. Did someone have a Travis ETN voodoo doll? They just threw it to the ground? What even happened there? He got past the diving Calais Campbell, no? Oh, Campbell got his, the maybe his heel? <laughs> Absolutely mental, isn't it? Right, more in it. That's how you do an authentic accent. <laughs> and of course, the Brit. Well, we don't actually talk like that. You know, don't actually give a fuck, isn't it? We're gonna play action. Caden Ellis, hands on, could not reel it in. That was looking to be another interception as Trevor Lawrence is struggling to put it together here in London. Oh, and around. No, Lorenzo Carter, what are you doing? He gave him a little kiss, and that was it. Said, have a good day at school. Sent him on his way. 22 yards on a rush for Christian Kirk. First and goal for the Jags. God, Lorenzo Carter sucks. Get after him. That's a touchdown. We sent everybody. Travis Etienne touchdown. And the Jags, not out of it yet. It's tied, in fact. Pretty much. 
That's going to be open. Julio cannot catch it. I had different plans for that when I saw him coming across. I think I actually threw it a little bit too early, if anything. Needed to let it develop a little bit more. I don't know about the pressure. Drake London is getting double teamed. They can't handle getting beat by Drake London. They got two guys over there. So who does that leave open? Well, it should have been Kyle Pitts. I just didn't feel comfortable about throwing the football there. And we do manage to outrun Devon Hamilton, I think, who was going to be chasing there. Desmond Ritter with just enough speed to make that play happen. Are they still double teaming Drake London? Doesn't appear to be the case. Second and seven running the football. Just go straight up the middle. Was trying to follow Jonu Smith there. Couldn't quite make it. And it's going to be third and short from midfield. I mean, it's a clear run. I'm going to try to go left here. I'm actually going to see if we can move over a tight end. Jonu Smith, I guess, is going to be the one. Now that shifts everything for us, but I still like our numbers to this side. And Bijan's going to be short. It's four down territory. We're fine. Not going to punt the ball from midfield on fourth and one. Like, I'm still going to run to the wide side of the field here. I know we're set up to block the other side, and maybe I should have trusted it. I just felt like we had so much space on the right side and had the numbers. They brought Rayshon Jenkins up, and they shut it down on fourth and short. Maybe that's a case of where I just need to follow the blocks and not flip that. Yeah, okay. I guess we'll uh, apply that to the future. It just looked so open. And that's kind of what I'm, I base that decision off of. Good enough defense from Terrell. That's just, that's tough. I feel like we're right there. And you know what? Deserve. St. Jones injured on the play. And it is first and 10. Trevor Lawrence from the gun. We blitz. Kind of bluff blitz there. Back in coverage, trying to cover everybody. Make a play, thank you. Third and one. They have stacked receivers. What is this? Gonna go to the flat. Broken tackle. These angles are so bad from the computer, man. I switched on and we couldn't move because he already overran Christian Kirk. It's so annoying. Jacksonville takes the lead. Man, we really screwed up here. We had the ball at midfield on third and short and didn't convert on back-to-back -back runs. But look at this, though. Who overran it? I mean, he just runs right by him. 27. I think that would have been Richie Grant, right? Is that Richie Grant? Yep. God, he's, he's bad. Like, Jesse Bates is also awful. The safety play is just atrocious in the game right now. I don't know if anything is going to get fixed, but... I mean, they're absolute idiots back there. Like, Jesse Bates is one of the highest-rated safeties the entire game, and makes me so mad every game. He is horrific. Second and two. Get it to Julio down the field. <sighs> Missed him. Missed him. Third and two. I mean, they're begging for us to throw over the middle here. Let's see if they make any type of adjustment. They're shading to that side. We're going to go to Pitts anyway. We're going to call a timeout. We can still run the ball here, right? I mean, it's eight yards. We'll call a timeout. We only have one left, but I know it's a little bit boring. Playing more for the field goal here than the touchdown. We still have 33 seconds. I guess it could happen. Please, Cordero. Ah, we just need London to run that corner out of the play. It's like a clear out that would have left him wide open. And again, maybe the ball came out a little bit too early. Matt Collins out onto the field now. It's third and one. Need to move the chains. Sacked. Timeout, Jacksonville. No, why? It's so annoying that it just takes you to recent plays. We're going to punt the ball, and then now I'm out here. i got to burn another timeout. Doesn't really matter in this case, but it's super annoying how quick these menus pop up, and... Obviously, I want to punt, and it took me to recent plays, which is super annoying. And again, for midfield on third and short, we don't convert. It's amazing how bad I am in those spots. 13 seconds. Please just don't let them score here. Lawrence going to run. Make him pay. He's still on his feet. Hit him. 
No timeouts left for Jacksonville. That is the end of the first half. Jacksonville holding a slight lead, 21-14. It's been close. We've left some plays and some opportunities on the table. Uh, we've left some yards, some points on the table, I should say. Didn't play terribly, but certainly could have played better. Okay, we get the football to start the second half. Big second half. We got to outscore them to win. That's all we have to do. Outscore them in the second half. It sounds easier when you say that's all we have to do. No, oh, that's all we have to do is win the Super Bowl. Seems easy. Jonu Smith is injured. Are we going to have any tight ends? John Fitzpatrick injured. I mean, we're down to JJ or Sega Whiteside, who's maybe not even playing tight end anymore. Get up the field. Now we're going to scramble. Give us a block. Just didn't want to give us a block. Okay. Bruce Sternum. That's the modern day concussion, by the way, in Madden, since they don't have concussions in the game. So, Bruce Sternum. He's going to be out. That sucks. Okay, Tyler Algier with space. Enough speed. 13-yard pickup gets us the first down. Working off play action. We lob it over. Drake London sideline made the catch. I thought for sure that was getting out of bounds. Drake London used his size to pull the ball back in. That looks like it's going to go out of bounds for sure. London just slows down. Beautiful footwork on the sideline. And makes a big time play happen for us. And let's actually convert. We're going to bring on Bijan to be like a drag option for us. I, I see Kyle Pitts. He just cannot fit it in. Saw it too late. Third and 15. They, they're they showing blitz. Let's see if it actually comes. It doesn't. We got Drake London. You can't leave him uncovered. I know they're in... I mean, it looks like it's some type of zone blitz, right? With uh, two in the A-gap. But they basically just give us... A free, easy shot to a receiver. Bijan uncovered, and that's going to be a Bijan Robinson touchdown. He finds the end zone every game. And now, you'd have to say, first rookie in 2023 to score touchdowns in multiple countries. Wide open, they sent everybody, didn't account for Bijan out of the flat. And that is a walk-in touchdown, maybe the easiest he will ever score. Tie ball game in London, 21 up. And you know what? 21-21 in London? Because 21 Savage is a UK citizen, I guess? Nah, he's, he's an Atlanta guy. Or he uh, starts every day with tea and crumpets. I'm not sure. Make a play. I mean, I don't know how he threw that to three different Falcons and nobody comes away with the ball. Let's have a Katie. And Smith? Oh, it's going to be a big play. Just not enough closing speed on this team, and I don't know if that's the team or the game. Get outside. Get outside. We didn't contain it all. Richie Grant saves a touchdown. Grady Jarrett's injured. Yeah, we didn't need any players who are good. Calling for help. Jogging off the field. That's never a good sign. Caden Ellis. Stay after T-Law, and he brings him down. Caden Ellis. I love these blitzes with the Mike linebacker. And there is an injury, potentially. Another bruised sternum? We are losing all of our players. T-Law got up really slow in that last one, but is in for the next snap. I don't know if he was hurt very much, if at all. But he's under pressure and sacked again. It's David on Yamada. Next man up on the D-line. Our entire D-line is getting injured. Calais Campbell is now playing nose tackle. Arnold Evocati shifted down. Okay, we got to go ahead and go pass commit here. Oh, that's wide open. Where is Jesse Bates going? I don't know if he was just deep half and, and thought that a threat over the middle was more pertinent to, to shade over to. But he just completely left a wide open receiver. And I think he, he might have had to. Because what was what was our call there? Did we run cover six? Is the most recent one on the far right or the far left? I think we I think we ran cover six. So we had he just had to cover the deep half. Yeah, it looks like it, right? And then he's kind of covering Calvin Ridley enough. 
and then kind of leaves to go cover the middle of the field. I guess he just had his back turned. I don't know. That's a tough spot. That's just that's just tough. Second goal from the one. We're run committing. We're sending everybody. Up the middle. We filled it. Fumble. Ball came out. Recovered immediately by Jacksonville. ETN coughed up the ball on the one. Huge play for us. Negative four yards for the Jags. We can still blitz here. We're going to show blitz and then we're going to send. Trying to cover everybody. Lawrence shakes off a sack and then runs into Arnold Ebikati. Was really nervous about a touchdown there. There were open receivers. T-Law just couldn't find him in time. They're going to try a field goal to take the lead 24-21. Just over a minute to play here in the third quarter. Our defense has played fairly well. We nearly had a block and then we nearly had a running into the kicker. I don't know why he let up. I don't know why he did. That was the CPU. Didn't control it. He just stopped trying to block the kick. Just gave up. Don't know why. He probably would have blocked it. And we have time. We don't have to, like, force the ball down the field. Just take what's there. JJ Arcega Whiteside shut down. Only gets a yard. 30 seconds here in the third quarter. It's third and short. We've been really bad on third and short the entire game. Because I want to run. And I feel like they're going to want to shut it down. That much makes sense to me. See where we can go with the ball. Robinson. Beautiful throw. Bijan Robinson still going. He's going to be so fun to use. End of the third quarter. Ending strong. A third down conversion. I barely even believe it myself. We have 124 on the ground. Allowing 152? Did I read that right? They surely do not have 152 yards rushing. That might have said passing. They, they can't have that many yards on the ground. Bijan broken tackle. Never really got control there. Working off play action on second and four. Wide open over the middle. Great throw from Ritter. Drake London in the London game. Continuing a big one. Ritter now over 200 yards passing. And we could go play action again. Yeah, I think we will. It's going to be tough for me not to uh, force the ball down the field here. We're just going to get it out quickly before I can even make a mistake. That's really... How do you not get rid of the football? Devin Lloyd having an epileptic seizure on the ground. I don't know what that was. I don't know if there were any flashing lights around, but odd reaction on the ground to celebrate a sack. I mean, they just sent it right up the middle. We tried to throw. I guess he hit us right at the perfect time. Better than the fumble. We're taking a shot here. It's going to be London or Julio. One of the two, probably. We're going to Drake London. Pass not accurate. Out of bounds. And unfortunately, we have to punt in this spot. I wish we didn't have to, but we have to punt. And that is not my best touchback. Ah! No! I'm trying to be on that! Travis Etienne, huge gain. That's brutal. I feel like we did everything we could there. The matchup just wasn't good. And, I mean, I got out there as quickly as I could. I don't even think there was any type of delay. Find the ball. Not going to happen. End around. Evocati, nice tackle. We've really been ravaged by injuries in this game, and that, I think, is a big reason the Jags have found a rhythm. You know, no Grady Jarrett is tough. Obviously an injury earlier. No Troy Anderson coming into the game. We've had a couple big injuries. And, I don't know. Guys in the secondary have been just so bad, too. Up the middle. Wow, what change of direction from Travis Etienne. We sold out to beat the run there. So, glad it actually paid off. But it looked like he was going to finagle his way around that for a second. Going to be second and goal. Simon has changed. We're going we're gonna to man up with Jesse Bates here on ETN. And thankfully, Lawrence missed that pass. That would have been an easy touchdown. Classic DB who was going to allow a big play, but the throw was missed, celebrating. Oldest trick in the book. 
Harrison in man coverage on Evan Ingram can't be good, but it doesn't matter. They go somewhere else. Christian Kirk touchdown. Not really a coverable route. Ran a, sl or ran a yeah, slant and uh, just a ball kind of spiked into the ground that he goes down and slides and catches. I don't know how you can defend that. Jags going to take a 31-21 lead with four minutes to play here in the UK. Going to be tough to win this one. It's going to be tough, especially when we thrive running the football. We still could, but then you'd be relying on a really quick three and out, three timeouts. I don't know. It's just a tough spot. Full momentum. That makes sense. That makes sense given what's going on. I mean, it's... It's tough. We can't just nickel and dime and get back in this game in four minutes. It's just not going to happen. But at the same time, we really don't have the personnel to be able to stretch the field and and get it all back really quickly. This doesn't exist like that. And we got to get it out to Patterson there. I mean, he's got to be open. Just can't hit him. Like, it can't be only me that would have thrown that there. I feel like that was wide open. Get it to London. Him catching the ball every time I throw it to him is huge. I mean, I can't even tell you how deflating it would be if he were dropping these passes. And they're not super easy. Stepping up with Ritter. Dude, Julio? Ah, really, really frustrated me at the top of that route there. He was just running an in. You know, a dig route over here. And he does this little stutter. I was going to throw it to him, right? He was open. I was going to throw it to him. And he does whatever that is. What is that? He faked me out. And then I, I couldn't throw the ball. We got I freaked out. He does this little random stutter that totally froze me. I mean, it, it's unreal. Uh, we're, we're in a tough spot. Oh, Bijan, get out of bounds. Stop the clock. All right, Matthew Bergeron fakes an injury. That'll do. Third and six. Bijan? Get it to him. Bijan, big catch. They're trying to drag him back. Can we get one more play before the two-minute warning? Hurry to the line. And maybe take a deep shot. Julio or Drake London. I don't like any of them. I like Bijan. He's open up the middle of the field. Bijan hurtling down inside the five. That's a two-minute warning. All right. He's really coming on as a receiver in this one. He was just the most open by a mile, too. Shoulder strain for Bergeron. Hennessy's going to come into the game, which means Bergeron's going to find his way back on the field and injure himself like Troy Anderson did. Second and goal. Bijan, please, more power. Got down to the one. I think we're going to go back to it. Quick snap him. Bijan fighting into the end zone. Touchdown. All right. Not dead yet. Oh, he's already got synchronized dances with Kyle Pitts. I love the chemistry from the guys. That's just trusting, you know, our offensive line up front and Bijan to find a way into the end zone. Nearly a great play by Jacksonville, but just not good enough. We're going to be down by a field goal. A minute 40 to play. We do have three timeouts. We don't have to onside kick it here. Should we, though? I think we, we definitely could. They'll start at midfield if we don't get it. And we have to get a three and out anyway. A field goal doesn't really hurt us. The problem is, I mean, it does because it forces us to get a touchdown instead of trying to settle for the field goal. The onside's probably not the play here. But now I can't call a timeout because, well, I have uh, already called the play. Can't waste a timeout. Gonna need that. Here we go. High kick. Let's see what happens. Oh, we got a good bounce. Ingram recovers. Ball on the ground. Skating around. Ku can't recover. Jacksonville falls on it. What? Devastating. Devastating. Oh, my goodness. Young Wei Ku fell on it. Could not reel it in. I get that he's the kicker, but oh, my goodness. What a way to not recover. I mean, it is a perfect, perfect onside kick. Got the bounce in the air that you want. Ingram forced to go up. Boom. Hit at contact. Can't haul it in. It's on the ground. Boom. One guy dives. Can't get to it. 
Two guys, three, can't get to it. Koo has the ball in his hands and misses. That is unreal. That's a great start. The we'll call a timeout. You gotta shut him down. We're in a formation set up entirely to stop the run here. All of our best interior defensive linemen that are not injured are in the game. They are actually going to have to call a timeout because Anton Harrison, rookie left tackle, is injured. He'll jog to the locker room. That's a big bonus for us. Let's go cover two. Just in case. They only have two receivers out on the field. We're going to have to shoot a gap here. That's going to do the job. ETN shut down. We're going to call a timeout. Jacksonville, of course, going to try a field goal. It's a 50-yarder. See if we can time this up. Nope. Kick is up and just inside. He had already missed one. Comes back and drills one in the fourth quarter. A little bit deeper, and I think that goes wide left. But 34-28, a touchdown and an extra point wins us the game. No return. We have one timeout. Let's go win a football game. Drake London has been that dude. Six catches, 115, and a touchdown. We need a little bit more. But we still can go over the middle of the field if we want to. We're sacked. Gotta call a timeout. That sucks. I just, ah! You gotta get rid of the ball. Just didn't really like any of the options. All right, now going over the middle of the field becomes a little bit tougher. But we still have some time left. We've tried this the entire game. It has not worked. It's not working now. The coach keeps calling verticals. Cordero Patterson gets pretty open on every one of these. And then we can never get him the ball. That's been a tough combo. We're doing it again. Patterson dropped the ball. Like I feel like it's our best matchup. He gets pretty open. We just cannot convert that. I know it's stupid that we haven't converted it and I keep trying that. The coach is calling it. Again, I run coach suggestions to make it more challenging and like it's an offensive coordinator calling the plays. Pitts would have been a good option. But Patterson's open. He's got space. And it's in his hands. It's in his hands. And he just drops it. He just goes, oh, oops, not anymore. Not going to catch that. Again, I, I get that, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But I think that gives us a good chance to to move the chains there. And Bijan, not on fourth down. Can't really trust that. Pitts would have had to make a tough catch too. And would have had to not been tackled. I don't know. I really... Of course, I have my own personal bias, right? But I can't fault myself for making that decision, in my opinion. I feel like it was the right one. Just didn't work and uh, didn't work much of the game. I just don't know what else we can do there when we are in just a crap fourth and ten spot. Tough loss, but we're playing a road game uh, in Jacksonville, England. And it was just a tough one. Couldn't quite get it done. Ritter and Lawrence end up with pretty similar numbers. It's just Trevor Lawrence completed six more passes, but same number of attempts, yards not too far, both three touchdowns, one pick. Uh, yeah, that was a tough one. Both running backs average over six yards per carry. I don't remember ETN having this big game, but I guess he did. 14 for 94 and a touchdown for Bijan. It was an interesting one. We allowed two 100-plus yard receivers. Kirk had a pair of touchdowns, and uh, that's tough. Drake London, big game, though. Bijan, six catches for 91 yards and a touchdown. Huge performance. Kyle Pitts was good enough. Nobody else really made much of an impact at all. Two drops for Cordero. He made an impact, just not a good one. And then injuries were tough. Sacks for David Onyemata, Caden Ellis, and Arnold Ebicady. Interception for Jalen Hawkins. 
four TFLs for Caden Ellis. Clayus Campbell had a pair as well. Yeah, just a, just a tough ending. Tough ending. Bijan with an upgrade. Love to see that. What do we upgrade on him? I think elusive for right now. Trucking's in an okay spot. I'd love to get spin and juke move up a little bit. We already know he's a really good receiver. I don't really think that needs to be upgraded very much, if at all, right now. Break tackle by one, carrying by two, and spin move by two. Okay. I love a good spin move. Gonna do power rusher for Grady Jarrett. That makes him back to a primary scheme fit. Plus one power moves. Plus two hit power could be interesting. Up to an 88. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure Grady Jarrett's somebody that I'm looking to get rid of. But I also don't think he is like a long-term answer for us. I, he's the number three left end in the league by overall. It's just, he's 30. I know he's going to regress. It, it puts me in a bit of a tough spot. So our goal was to beat the Jags. Didn't happen this week. We slip to one and three. And yeah, I mean, it, it's a tough one. No way around it. I think Ritter played well enough. Just again, it's a lack of consistency for us as a team. And I don't know. We, we, there were some third downs we couldn't convert where we just needed to. And on defense, we just couldn't get stops when we needed them one of those games. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.